At least eight people were injured and another five remain missing as a result of two fires at facilities in the Mexican state-owned oil company Pemex in the state of Veracruz. One year after the start of the Russian military operation in Ukraine, the United Nations Security Council met to discuss the Chinese proposal to end the conflict. In Nigeria, electoral authorities officially announced they are implementing security measures at voting stations for the presidential and legislative elections to be held next February the 25th. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The president of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, met with the wife of former Peruvian president Pedro Castillo, with whom he expressed his solidarity. Within his meeting with Lilia Paredes, the Mexican president denounced that Pedro Castillo has harassed by the opposition since the beginning of his mandate and described his dismissal as unjust. AMLO also called uh, the current head of the Peruvian executive, Dina Boluarte, and uh, its first president. In this way, López Obrador uh, reiterated his support uh, for Castillo while affirming that he will continue to demand his freedom. On the other hand, he informed that Castillo's uh, children are continuing their studies in the Mexican country and assured that the government of Mexico is watching over their uh, welfare. We consider that it was a great injustice to have removed him from office because he was elected by the people. Furthermore, the Peruvian conservatives, who are a minority, violated the Constitution since he was elected. They began to harass him. He had only been in office for a month or two months, and they were already asking for his removal. In Mexico, on Thursday, far broke out at two facilities in the state on oil company Pemex in the state of Veracruz, injuring at least eight people as other fires remain missing. The state on oil company stated on a press release that Pemex extinguished a fire that broke out in the drilling equipment, which provide maintenance to the Tucson Deplin 331 cavity in the municipality of Ashuatlan, in which three people were reported injured. The second fire occurred in the Maya cabinet plant in the Mina Titland refinery, also in Veracruz, which left at least five people injured. Bolivia's Minister of the Presidency, Marianela Prada, assured on Thursday that President Luis Arce will not approve any amnesty for people who commit crimes and add that they will be brought to justice so that impunity does not prevail. With his statement, the head official responds to the threat of the civil leader of Santa Cruz, Romulo Calvo, who the day before when President Arce said that he has until Friday the 25th to decree amnesty for the alleged political prisoners, among them the former governor of Santa Cruz, Fernando Camacho, who is uh, being prosecuted for his participation in the heat attack of uh, 2019. Minister uh, Prada stressed that in this South American country there are no political prisoners, uh, that those who have committed crimes must answer to the justice. Ecuador's National Assembly approved a political trial against former Interior Minister Patricio Carrillo from failing to fulfill his duties. With 105 votes in favor, the Ecuadorian legislature will bring Carrillo to trial for his inaction in the femicide case of Maria Belen Bernal, a young woman from Quito who was murdered inside a police school during the former minister's term. In addition, the Assembly also filed uh, charges of uh, citizen security for the actions taken against the demonstrator during the National War Strike in 2022, which left 10 people dead.
In Haiti, four people died on Friday following a shooting in the town of Fort Yex, uh, southeast of the capital, Port au Prince. According to a police source, so armament allegedly members of the gang start shooting at the local inhabitants for no reasons, resulting in a death of four people, two of them from the same family. Another victim was a police agent of the security of the former president, Joseph Mela Prevert. Several people were also wounded in the attack. On the same day, five other deaths were reported in North Hercules and Carrefour, together with the kidnapping of two political figures. The death toll from the storm that devastated the northern coast of Sao Paulo over the weekend reached 54, according to tool released on Friday by the civil defense of the Brazilian state. Colonel Hengel Pereira stated that 53 deaths were reported in the city of São Sebastián and one in Abutuba. Officials' reports also confirmed that 38 bodies were identified and released for a burial. The victims are the 13 men, 12 women and 13 children. The United States government on Thursday gave its official report of the Ohio train at the Turnland on early February, which so far has left over the 45,000 animals dead among their other serious climatic consequences. The National Transportation Safety Board reported on Thursday that an overheating of the train will bring is what caused the accident. According to the government experts, the vehicle never exceeded the speed limit, and even though the anomaly detector work, it couldn't prevent the deterrent. Authorities have also expressed that a final report will likely take between 12 and 18 months. Let's take our very first break now, but remember, you can now follow us on our TikTok account, as well as English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. On Ferrari, the 24th marks the first year of Russia's special military operation in the Donbas region. Before the armed conflict, Russia has denounced the United States and NATO for forcing the situation in Ukraine and undermining territorial security by increasing its military presence in several countries bordering the Russian country. A year ago, the Russian president announced the decision to launch the special military operation to demilitarize and desnazify Ukraine, aiming to defend the Donbas region and protect its population from Kiev aggressions. On Tuesday, almost one year since the beginning of the crisis, Putin said that the US and Ukraine had started the armed conflict and are responsible for continuing to blood a peaceful solution. And as we said, one year into the conflict in Ukraine, the toll of the conflict has started to show and the backstage moves in the geopolitical arena and more and more is the evidence. To go on the matter, we invite political analyst Kayla Pouchet to join us. Bill, welcome, Kayla. Hello, Kai. Thank you for having me. That's, uh, we are so grateful to having you in our program today. So let's start with our questions. Today, the Ukrainian uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky has declared that, that victory is inevitable and it's easy to say that uh, when you have NATO and the European Union on your side, but if this were so, wouldn't it have won already in this conflict? I think it's extremely obvious that we see that, you know, Ukraine isn't fighting this war with Russia by itself. Russia is just one country up against all the NATO countries. 
the United States, the European Union, UK, Germany have given Ukraine billions of dollars and billions worth in weapons all to fight Russia. And yet this conflict is still going on for over a year. Not only that, Ukraine's army is not just the Ukrainian army. It's not their own people. They're getting volunteers from all over the Western world, all over these young men who have signed up, who've been propagandized by their own governments to fight against Russia in a war that they have no business being in just to proceed with Western interests interests in the region. So the fact that Volodymyr Zelensky will really think that uh, victory is inevitable, given how much billions he's already been funded, given how many support he's been given in, in weapons and in manpower, and yet they're still going against Russia, really just shows the strength that the Russian army has, the Russian armed forces, over all of NATO, all of NATO united, all but, you know, more declared in a declared way. NATO is absolutely fighting in this war. They're giving Ukraine money, they're giving Ukraine volunteers, they're giving Ukraine weapons, and yet they're still not victorious over Russia. Yeah, it's kind of curious because they said it was an inevitable victory, but as you said, they had many support, they have weapons, they have the money, they had the troops, but it's one year ago, and nowadays they haven't won yet. But um, this ago, NATO top official Jens Stoltenberg accused China of a possible endorsement to Russia during the conflict. But precisely today, the United Security Council contemplated a Chinese proposal to end the conflict, and Zelensky himself was welcomed some elements of a Chinese proposal for a ceasefire. So, how China could contemplate in the conflict? What do you think, or what is your opinion, or what's your point of view in this situation? in its conflict and the role that China could play. I think that from the very beginning, China hasn't been taking a role that's overly supportive of Russia. Uh, although China is a sovereign country and China is allowed to make whatever decisions that it wants to, China has been more you know, favorable to Russia, more of a neutral position, more peaceful, obviously engaging in trade with Russia while the Western world wants Russia to be completely isolated. That's not in China's interest. It's not in China's economic nor political interest as they do have a favorable position and relationship with Russia. But China is still coming forward and trying to present this peace proposal because China has its own issues. China does not want to get dragged into a world war with Russia and all the NATO countries when China has already the United States in its backyard in Taiwan that's been gearing up with military offenses. We saw Nancy Pelosi, who was told by Chinese officials to not go to Taiwan, deliberately ag go against the will of Chinese officials and go to Taiwan anyway. Um, and so there is a lot of conflict that's gearing up in the Pacific as is. And China is not interested in escalating a war in Europe when it has its own issues at home that it has to look towards, especially because of U.S. imperialism. Yeah, that's right, because uh, China has a lot of, of, of to deal right now with the U.S., and I don't think that it will to get involved in the situation, but be like the first person involved in the situation with Ukraine. But lastly, just hours ago, the World Bank pledged $2.1 billion in aid to Ukraine. The U.S. also promised a new billionaire land to Kiev and some European nations will send more military equipment. Western economies are exhausted and strained in a conflict that does not involve them directly and that is uh, blending them out. While well, smaller economies that let India experiences add these decreased growth. So what's uh, the prospect for the major economies in the world during and after this conflict? Because it's not easy being an expanded lack quantity of money in a world that is not yours, in a country that is not yours. Well, it's kind of an investment if you think about it. For NATO countries, this is really, it's a symbolic. They're fighting Russia through Ukraine, but it really is symbolic of their own war. In a way, it is their own war, that they haven't declared war in their countries, but it is a war. It is their proxy war that they're using Ukraine to fight their battle, which is why they cannot lose, which is why they're spending billions of dollars as their own economies are on the brink of collapse, as their own citizens are stressing out and can't afford to put food on the table, pay for gas, or have heat in their homes 
homes, it's still worth it to the ruling class of these countries because this is how this is their last chance to maintain hegemony. They absolutely cannot have a Russian victory in this region because therefore that marks the decline of Western hegemony over the world if Russia emerges powerful. And so it is kind of like a double edged sword. One, they're ignoring their people at home and we're seeing protests arising all over the West. There was just one last week in the United States. We've seen them across Europe already where people are saying they are against NATO, they are against US or Western involvement in this war. And yet the ruling classes of these countries just cannot let go because this is the last grip of power that they have. And so they are willing to sacrifice everything, their own economies, just to make sure that there won't be a Russian victory. And yet they still can't even help that. They still can't even prove that. And another aspect to it that I think is very interesting that we, we need to consider is all the billions of dollars that Ukraine has received from all these countries. What's going to happen to Ukraine in the end when the, these Western countries come knocking on Ukraine's door and say, all right, it's time to pay up. We gave you billions of dollars. Will there be a Russian victory? Or are they going to ask Russia for uh, you know, compensation for all the money that they gave back to Ukraine if there is a so-called Ukrainian victory? Then does Ukraine just become a vassal state where, you know, their their country is cut up into different pieces of how much each country has given? Germany gets this much, the UK gets this much, the US gets, you know, the southern region, Poland gets this much. What's really going to happen? We're look, giving all this money to Ukraine willy nilly, but is nobody stopping to asking, what is it going to? What are we going to do when it's time for Ukraine to pay back? Ukraine is in an incredibly disenfranchised position because either way, there is no winning situation for Ukraine. Either Ukraine capitulates to Russia or Ukraine becomes a vassal state of the West, even more than it already is. Yeah, thank you for your explanation in all our questions. Uh, we are so glad to have you in this, uh, in this interview. So thank you very much. To next time. And uh, the United Nations Security Council met on Friday to discuss the Chinese proposal to end the conflict. The document is a 12 point uh, proposal, which includes uh, the cessation of unilateral sanctions and the reception of visa dialogues. China is committed to peacefully conciliation and advocates for the adequate conditions for the parties involved in a conflict to find a solution. Beijing said that the security of one country cannot be at an expense of the security of others and that the regional security cannot be guaranteed by the threatening or the expanding military blocks. At the United Nations Security Council meeting held this Friday to discuss the Chinese proposal to end the conflict in Ukraine, Secretary General Antonio Guterres stated the United Nations position on the matter, highlighting its uh, uh, compromise to remove uh, the obstacles to Russia's food and fertilizer exports. And the United Nations is firmly committed to working to remove remaining obstacles to Russian food and fertilizer exports, including ammonia. These exports are essential to our broader efforts to bring down prices and this food insecurity around the globe. Both efforts demonstrate that international cooperation is essential, valuable and possible, even in the midst of conflict. And the U.S. tied in sanctions against Russia on the first uh, anniversary of the start of the mil Russian military operation in Ukraine. The United States on Friday announced new sanctions against Russia, which seeks uh, to reduce Moscow's access uh, to strategic technology such as uh, semiconductors. The new sanctions come on top of multiple uh, previous uh, measures imposed uh, over the past 12 months that uh, target uh, Russian financial institutions as well as third countries in Europe, Asia and the Middle East that oppose Western blocks efforts uh, to create, provide and incentivate the current Ukraine crisis. Russian Foreign Ministry on Friday warned that the U.S., NATO and Ukraine that any provocation towards uh, Transnistria uh, will uh, be considered an attack against uh, the Russian territory. In a statement issue on Friday, the Russian uh, ministry declared that, that any hostile action against uh, the security of uh, Russian citizens uh, or the servicemen in a self-proclaimed Republic of Transnistria in uh, Moldova will be considered by Moscow as an attack against the country.
We have more news coming up after this short break, but you can now watch Telstra English in 33 different African countries through Starset. Dial 461 and enjoy our American alternative broadcast. And let's take a break. Welcome back. Malaysia will rise development spending and plans new taxes for the wealthy in an smaller batch plan this year as the government had to balance between foreign groups and reining in a budget deficit. Three months after the, his election's victory, Prime Minister awarded Ibrahim Abdel about an $87 million national budget focus of tackling rising costs of living and an economic slowdown. Following other subsidized land with cash aid for the poor farmers and industries are the trainer along with other new incentives to tackle youth employment and boosting it for ministers. The United Nations Humanitarian Affairs Court in Aden office said on Friday that $4.6 billion are needed to assist more than 23 million people in Afghanistan this year. After, after years of conflict and instability, Afghanistan is a country beset by hunger with 60% of its population dependent on humanitarian aid. Afghan's uh, finance ministry, uh, Pogman, uh, said that along with drawn and climate change, the freezing of uh, banking assets by the United States and other Western countries as well uh, as uh, being cut out of the financial and uh, packing system have uh, contributed to increase poverty in the nation. The Hezbollah Islamic resistance movement denounced on Friday the interference and economic war of the United States against Lebanon in light of a presidential vacant. The teachers stride a decrease in purchasing power, the collapse of the national currency, and high prices of basic necessities describe the economic social reality of Lebanon aid as a fourth month of a presidential vacant. In this context, Shiite Executive Council Deputy Chairman Ali Damush said Washington is planning an organized chaos in the country to force the Lebanese to surrender to its conditions. In Nigeria, electoral authorities officially announced they are implementing security measures at voting stations for the presidential legislative elections to be held next February the 25th. Independent National Electoral Commission Chairman Mohamed Yakubu said that the measures aimed at preventing situations except experience in the past elections like burning of the ballot boxes and documents that need extensions of the buying clashes between militants of rebel political parties among others. This have to warrant security during the elections has been developed and reflect on the complexity of the presence of the African nation with the highest number of voters. 93,469,800 were candidates have signed up his agreement vowing to accept elections results. And we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other studies on our website at teleserenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials from Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. Teleser English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.